I need you to pay attention to this clip very closely and to the commentary for today. I agree with AI 1000% and Carlos, you probably don't agree with Men should stay out of women's shit. They gotta stay I out of women's I disagree with that. I know you do, I knew you were, I knew you were, I knew you were. When I'm having an argument with Toya, Eugene need to stay out of it because I don't like talking to men because I'm gonna say the wrong stuff and it's gonna go the wrong way. That's just my thought, you know what I'm saying? If I'm having a discussion. The reason why I wanted to play that specific clip of Carlos King and Dr. Heavenly having a conversation about how they feel about women arguing with men and men arguing with women. As you heard in that video, you heard Carlos King say, I actually disagree with you, Dr. Heavenly. I actually enjoy watching the men argue with the women and vice versa. And he goes on in this clip just for context to clean it up and say, well, he prefer for couples to go back and forth with others, whether it be a man or a woman, which we know. Usually when a person, you know, yell out their first um comments that's usually what they feel but when they are in a room with other people who can maybe enlighten them then they tend to backpedal and pee pop but there's a reason why i played that clip because i definitely want to get into this conversation that's being had about winter from love and marriage dc there was quite a few things that was revealed during this interview with Queen Sheba and Winter. And one thing in specific for me that jumps out is Monique Samuels. She stated that Sam Samuels ended up leaving because she felt like the direction of the show was not what they actually intended for it to be. So I found an article from way back when Monique made a statement as to why she was leaving Love and Marriage DC. Thing that Monique Samuels made pretty darn clear on Love and Marriage DC, especially in the earlier seasons was she did not really call Real Housewives of Potomac by its name. She would call it that other show. And she was she would speak a little bit about her past transgressions on the show and how she would like to, you know, show her family in a different light. So that was the whole point of her being on the show to begin with. But here's her remark. If you do your homework, you know that Monique gave two different statements. At least information was leaking, right? We don't know if she verbally said this, but we know that she went to the radio station and she originally stated the reason why she did not return to Love and Marriage DC is because of contractual issues. She said the contract had to make sense. Also, shortly after her departure, we know that the rumors of her divorcing Chris came out. And that's just not what she was willing to share unless she had the money attached to it, which was confirmed by Winter in the Queen Sheba's interview. The second reason that was swirling, the reason why Monique decided to leave, was because the show was becoming more like Real Housewives of Potomac. And if you listen to me in the beginning, I just told you when she would do her confessionals and they would ask her about the other show, she would call it the other show. She literally wouldn't give them much more than that. So I can totally understand why she just did not want to move forward with Love and Marriage DC. But Winter, let it be known that around this time as well, if I remember correctly, a woman named Angela, whom I found online, she was actually producer of Love and Marriage DC in the beginning stages, as well as Love and Marriage Huntsville. And I saw some information that she produced on Bell Collective as well. But she decided to leave Love and Marriage DC. That's when the tone of the show began to change. I wanted to put a face with a name, and this is Angela Duggan. I think that's her name. I found her on LinkedIn. And as you see, she has King Rain Entertainment in her bio. I head on over to IMDB. And I see the full cast and crew for Love and Marriage Huntsville. I have Angela Duggan listed as executive producer slash co-executive producer slash development producer slash supervising producer, 135 episodes, 2019 through 2024. When I head over to Love and Marriage DC, she is listed again as executive producer, 18 episodes, 2023 through 2024 so it's not really telling us if she's still a part of the cast or not because we know 2024 is here um however in the interview winner said that love and marriage dc um lost angela at some point but it seems maybe she's behind the scenes we just don't know about it maybe winner don't know due to the fact of them um not really communicating to the cast bonus i went on and did some more digging as to the producers for love and marriage Huntsville and love and marriage dc i found some names that i may butcher some names i do apologize <laughs> but i have brent nisbet that's n-i-s-b-e-t-t -T. he was the executive producer of love and marriage dc he also was a producer of love and marriage Huntsville. we also have marcus burns real housewives of potomac 
Real Housewives of Atlanta and Love and Mary Chinesville. Important to name these individuals that's working behind the scenes. Well, if you ask me, I feel like it's important because we heard Winner say that she too was leaving the show because of the direction, because she was pitched to show that it was going to be about Black excellence as well as Monique. And Monique decided to leave because it was taking the direction of Real Housewives of Potomac and not really doing its own thing, which ultimately did not. Another name that came up was Andrew Hoagland and then also Carlos King per usual. Now, on the Love and Marriage DC side, I keep saying, yeah, Love and Marriage DC side, he appears as a producer, but it doesn't tell you how many episodes he worked on. As a matter of fact, it has Melody Cherie listed in 2021 and 2021 only. So I don't, I'm not sure how many scenes she actually produced, but she is listed as a producer nevertheless. But we do know that Carlos King has been producing these shows since the beginning of time. He's the, he's the executive, so he has to know what's going on at every given time. But he's telling us and, and others, especially his castmates, that he has no damn idea. I remember watching the Mummy podcast. Is that Letitia's podcast? Is that the name of the podcast? Y'all tell me below. But I remember watching a segment on Facebook of Carlos King and Letitia having a conversation about what he feel like the direction of Love and Mary Chinesville should go. And I remember his words verbatim because I screenshotted it, but I didn't post it because they like to strike. OK, but I remember him telling her that he feels like the franchise should be that of loving um, Real Housewives of Potomac and Real Housewives of Atlanta. He wanted to trump that. And so it makes a lot of sense as to why Winter and Monique got the hell up out of there because they already know what comes with those shows. In my opinion, I feel like a lot of producers are now wanting to be a part of the cast. And that's what's making it unbearable to watch at this point is because they're really trying to produce TV instead of letting things happen naturally. And we know that they're trying to be a part of the cast because they were saying, Winner was saying that when she was going back and forth during a reunion, someone from the back. I don't know for, for sure if she said producer. I think she did. Y'all can correct me below. But I believe she said a producer was the one to yell, get that B, right? Encouraging her argue with these men on stage. And you know who loves it the most? You guessed it. In my opinion, Carlos enjoys it. Because he was once quoted saying after a petition went out against him to be removed, that if there wasn't any type of toxicity, if there wasn't any type of of back and forth arguments drama if they were just going to picnics etc then it, then we will be calling his show boring totally missing she the mark. feels the need to defend and i like it when i see couples not not when it's um not balanced i like when couples engage so just like when daddy your husband takes you out the house puts you in the car because he knows that I, like you, have sat back for months and watched Carlos King critique other shows. He's also suggested that some cast members need to be fired. Some cast members are plants. Some cast members need to put on their vision board to ask God for another uterus. I've heard Carlos King even consider him. This man said, as a woman, Wendy and Candace should have reached out to Giselle. Out of compassion, he would think that it would be nothing for them to reach out to Giselle. See, here's my take on that. I truly believe... Carlos King can't help himself. He's attracted to drama. I believe that he's one of those friends that don't have anything else to talk about. The deepest he would go is quoting a scripture. But if you're looking for sound advice, deep-rooted advice, something that would move you, you're not going to reach out to a Carlos King. I feel like the only thing he has to offer to, to people, I guess, that he don't really necessarily care for, people that he's quote-unquote pimping and i'm using winter's word i don't think he has much for them other than you're going to be okay you got this because see as long as he convinced himself that you're going to be okay he can convince you to continue to make him money now he's confessed on um, one of these shows that he was critiquing he said that a lot of the times producers make their money off reruns that's what he said now i'm paraphrasing but he definitely said that which lets me know the only reason why you get these people on the show is so that you can get the back the money on the back end, which then posed the question as to why is it so hard for your cast members to negotiate their pay, especially somebody of a status like Monique Samuels. These are just my opinions, 
my thoughts, my viewpoints. It's not to persuade you one way or another. It's to start a conversation, get you to thinking, and really to see where you guys stand with this Carlos King character. I'm going to point out two more things and I'm going to let you go. Another thing that I find very interesting is how he's not willing to call out the the the, the bigger celebrities on these shows like a Nene Leakes or a Giselle Bryant. He kind of straddles the fence when it comes to Giselle. I feel like it's in hopes to get her on his platform so he can interview her. If y'all don't know, years ago, about two, three years ago, when he was, I believe, let go from Bravo. I'm not quite sure on the timeline, but there was an article that emerged about Bravo wanting Carlos to sign a non-compete agreement once he was, you know, once he was let go. Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense as to why Bravo was considering having you sign that contract if you hadn't signed the contract, but that's his business. I'm just saying there was rumors circulating that they wanted him to badly sign that contract because they knew that he would try to take their talents. Another thing you guys need to pay attention to when Carlos King is hosting these interviews, something that I had is when he's asking Dr. Heavenly about her opinion about certain cast members such as Wendy. The only reason why I'm selecting Wendy is because I heard them today talk about the show on his live and her live, right? Well, before it went, um, Heavenly could really talk, Carlos was already painting the picture on how he feels about Wendy. And what it was sounding like he was leading up to is that he didn't really like Wendy. He would much rather NECA, right? Because he liked the more problematic characters, always, in my opinion. Well... Dr. Heavenly began to give her commentary. She said, I know Wendy. I don't know NECA. And then she began to talk about the, the Igbo tribe and how she's in Africa learning more about the tribes and things of that nature. That's when he began to fold. Oh, well, I don't like Ashley. I don't know how he said Wade, but it, it just totally flipped. And I just began to think, this is probably how you treat all your cast members. You probably reel them in, make them feel like they're special. And then you flip on them with the help of production, of course. Yeah, this might be business, right? People sign up, they sign a contract, they know what they're up against. I totally understand that. But when it turns into a toxic environment and you're aware of it because you're orchestrating this, that's when the problem ensues. There's talks that Winter may be suing Rain Entertainment and Carlos is at the top of that list. I don't know this to be true, but if it is... I wouldn't be surprised because one thing about it is what goes around comes around. It's interesting to me, not that I'm happy about it, but it's interesting because aren't you the one that pushed Maurice to sue content creators <laughs> and now people are planning to sue you? Wouldn't that be crazy? I was done with Carlos, you guys, when I saw Bell Collective re reunion, although he stopped the, the, the emerging of emotions from the family, Sanjay and Selena and Soguchi and her husband, right? We know that there was a breakdown in the family, but I feel like Carlos was really trying to dig in there and really tear them apart. And it was really sad to see because we had never seen the girls in that light. And we know that they were upset, rightfully so, but I just don't think that that should have made the cut. We know what reality TV can do to families, couples. We've seen the reality TV curse. It seems like this man spearheads that environment of ripping families apart. He may say that he care for you. He may cry with you. He may even dab your tears. But all in all, all this is for Carlos, in my opinion, is money. Otherwise, why is he on platforms talking about shows, money, status? He does more talking about other shows than he do on Love and Marriage Huntsville. Because if you notice, when he was doing the reviews with Dustin, he would nine times out of ten let Dustin do all the talking, agree to disagree at times. But he really didn't give his full range as he does for a Real Housewives of Potomac. I find it very interesting. I advise anybody that's boycotting the show i need y'all to look into the producers of the show really get familiar with the names i damn sure am anytime i see their names i hope that i'll remember where i know them from
because I remember the name Marcus Burns. And now it makes sense, Real Housewives of Atlanta. Either way, back to Carlos. During this segment of these pieces that I'm pulling from the show that Dr. Heavenly Carlos and Al did six months ago, they were talking about, again, cast members that weren't paid their wages. And a clip of Monique came up and she was talking, uh, you know, on behalf of Countess. Countess is from the Parkers and how she wasn't paid her fair share. And then they segued into another segment about CBS. I think I'm getting it right. Y'all don't quote me. But apparently one of these networks was making almost, if not $800 million just off recaps, reruns of their shows on this network and they weren't paying the cast members that made it happen for them they didn't want to pay them anything and so carlos's response to that was the people that want their money should hire high profile power of uh power attorneys stand on that stand on that when it's your turn this is why we should be careful what we say out of our mouths I seen a clip of Love and Mary Chansfield. I'll break that down next. I also have some commentary about Larry Reed, as I, as I've been saying. And um, y'all, we just have to be careful as content creators. It's dirty out here. They're playing dirty games. They don't want their secrets exposed. They don't want people talking about them. They feel slighted, but it's so interesting that producers are now getting involved with drama online, responding to comments. Even though a Carlos King has suggested that his his cast members. On Love and Marriage Huntsville and other franchises that he's over. He suggested that they not look at the comments. However, you're looking at the comments because you're responding. That's all I'm saying. Roll out this content for you guys because I love chatting with you on YouTube. Now, I am very active on TikTok. If you want to go over to my TikTok, it's TinkMarche91. Go ahead and follow me on there as well. But most importantly, don't forget to engage below. Whether you agree or disagree, if you disagree, disagree respectfully or get blocked. Thank you for your time. See you below. Warning. Warning. Warning.